Project Appleseed is an activity of the Revolutionary War Veterans Association, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to teaching Americans our shared heritage and traditional rifle marksmanship skills. We believe the key to a brighter future in America is active exercise of our right to self-government. Our heritage program recounts the Battle of Lexington and Concord to remind Americans that just over 200 years ago, our ancestors faced a terrible choice. The choice they made and the price they paid resulted in the liberty we enjoy today. Our rifle marksmanship program complements the history presentation, introducing a wide cross-section of Americans to their marksmanship heritage. We teach marksmanship because it requires learned positive traits, such as persistence, focus, and responsibility. Historical accounts of the first battle of the American Revolution vary so greatly that modern Americans may be confused about how the war started. Who was the aggressor in the skirmish at Lexington, Massachusetts on the morning of April 19, 1775? Both sides were under orders not to fire unless fired upon, yet one side obviously did. Let's take a look at the documented historical evidence. Major John Pitcairn of the British Marines commanded a group of over 300 light infantry. Though he was known to have no sympathy for the colonists, even his political opponents admired his character. Major Pitcairn reported that he had ordered his troops not to fire, but to surround the Lexington militia. He was quoted as saying, Without any order or regularity, the light infantry began a scattered fire. Captain John Parker commanded the Lexington Militia. By the time the Redcoats had arrived, he had 77 men under his command. Parker had been elected to his position by his troops due to his experience in the French and Indian War and their high regard for his character. By his own report and the accounts of his men, he had ordered the militia to disperse without firing. Lexington Minister Jonas Clark wrote that, Far from firing first upon the king's troops, upon the most careful inquiry, it appears that but very few of our people fired at all. Casualties among the militia were eight killed and nine wounded. Considering gunshot wounds only, the majority of the entry wounds were in the backs of the Lexington men. The only casualty among the king's troops was Private Johnson of the 10th Foot, who was shot in the thigh. His wound did not prevent him from marching on to Concord. At the North Bridge in Concord, three companies of British Light Infantry, about 115 men, defended the bridge against nearly 500 militia commanded by Colonel James Barrett. Once again, the Redcoats fired without orders. In the firefight that followed, four of the eight British officers present were hit, three enlisted soldiers were killed, and nine were wounded. Among the Concord Regiment, two were killed, and four were wounded. In summary, if Captain Parker's men had fired first at Lexington, wouldn't we expect to see a casualty ratio closer to the North Bridge numbers? If the militia had fired first at Lexington, would most of their gunshot wounds have been taken in the back? And finally, would the British commander on the scene have reported that his own troops fired without orders? The evidence clearly indicates that the King's troops were the aggressors on Lexington Common, beginning the war that created our nation. Project Appleseed is dedicated to reminding Americans of our shared heritage and the importance of marksmanship. For more information on the program, including events scheduled in your area, go to appleseedinfo.org.